old Austrian, but she's had a pretty good start to 1996. 14 and 5 singles record. And coming up on the $30,000 mark in prize money and her Cinderella trip to these finals, Mary. In fact, just for getting here, she'll, you know, ranking will bump up to 17. If she beats Sanchez Vicardo, it'll go up to 15. As you can see, she had to dance around with Natalie Tozio, dropped that middle set and then came through. And then last year's finalist, Maggie Maleva, took the first set from Paulos and then she recovered from that. Irena Skrlea, the young Romanian, had taken out Sabatini. So Paulos didn't have to play a C there, but then she knocked out the big one, Conchita Martinez, defending champion in straights. And that was just a little over an hour ago. Conchita Martinez was the top seed, the second seed, Arancha Sanchez Vicario, number three in the world, born in Barcelona, Spain, very familiar to the clay courts, currently living in Andorra, nine and three singles record in 96, but looking for her very first title, better than $200,000 in prize money already. That will put her over the $10 million mark in prize money, and not too many women have done that. She got a bye because she was one of the top four seeds. Dropped the first set to Martina Hingis at Love, her first clay court match of the season. Took her a little bit of time to get her to get her feeling there. Then she beat Sabina Hack in straight sets. And Jana Novotna, and that was played earlier today as well. But Sanchez Vicaria has been off the court for a while now. She's had a little bit more rest than Paulus. So contrasting, top five player in the world since 91. Sanchez on the right has won all five previous head-to-head -head meetings. The last meeting... Back in 1990, Sanchez Vicario winning out in straight sets. In fact, Barbara Paulus has never yet taken a set from Sanchez Vicario. So she's got an awful lot of work ahead of her today. Well, she will take home a huge check here. The biggest of her career, win or lose. $200,000 in prize money to the winner. Almost a million dollar total purse. And it'll be Barbara Paulus to serve to open it up. Check that at Arancha Sanchez Vicario to serve in the far court. There he is in the early going here. Set up uh, the styles of tennis that we'll see here. See those, uh, she's had both wrists operated on in the last couple of years, Barbara Paulus. They're loose by nature. And she took a bad fall on them, screwing up both her wrists and her knee. Three unforced errors in a row put Sanchez Vicario on top very early against Barbara Paulus. Finally, a point by Paulus. You mentioned her injuries, Mary. Uh, she continued to play with them, and that set her back even more. You can tell the, from the very long strokes that she's a clay court player. But Arancha Sanchez Vicario comes out early and wins the opening game of this first set. Welcome back. You're looking at Arancha Sanchez Vicario's coach, David D. Miguel. A former tour player, a, a journeyman pro, a good Spanish clay court player. And he, he's worked with a couple of, uh, of other players as well. Gabriel Erpi has been Arancha's coach for the last several years, but he's home right now. His wife is a bit ill. So Miguel, Di Miguel is filling in. And our first look at the service game of Barbara Paulus. Tall, lanky, five feet, nine and a half. And in comes Arancha to the net, but 
it's Paulus that makes her pay. Sanchez Vicario will be into the net a lot more than Barbara Paulus. Again, take a look at this approach shot. It wasn't deep enough, and again, though Paulus has very big swings, she wasn't rushed enough by Sanchez Vicario and got off a good shot. First double fall of the match. Barbara Paulus has beaten some big names in her tennis career. She's knocked off Chris Everett, who's won this tournament eight times back in 89 in the European Open. Beat Conchita today, beat her before today as well. So Paulus uh, at least doesn't seem to be intimidated by the big names as you take a look at uh, her career record, four singles titles to date. Has also beaten Mary per Pierce, Yana Novotna, Eva Mayoli. The list goes on. And that one long by Arancha. I think it might be good for Barbara Paulus that she hasn't had much of a break between her Conchita Martinez win and this final. She hasn't had to think about such a glorious win. You know, she ha I think she could still be running on adrenaline right now. Though she had four unforced serves in the first game, she seems a little bit calmer in game two. Uh, that was an opportunity. That really was. I mean, she'd gotten herself a, a very good first serve into the court and had just the kind of loose ball she should have attacked better. Great point. Oh. Another and double fault. Second double fault, and that's the break first break of the match early in Sanchez Vicario roars to a two-love lead in the first set in her career as Mary mentioned earlier she'll jump over the 10 million dollar mark 22 singles titles she's got 42 doubles titles and she and Yana Novotna are going for the doubles title here there's a possibility that Sanchez Vicario could play three maybe four matches today these two singles and then two doubles The top women's singles players do a much better job of supporting the doubles events at tournaments than the top men. And the unforced errors racking up in Paulus' line, 8-2. She's not even making Sanchez Vicario play it. game point for Sanchez Vicario. Mary, I know you had a chance to see some of the semifinal with Conchita Martinez. Are we seeing a little bit more of a different uh, air prone Paulus in this final so far? I think so. I think Martinez kind of self-destructed. Forty fifteen now.
his third game already down, Love, too. That's a big old wallop, isn't it? She's 5'9", and she uh, so she's got some pretty good reach. And wasn't afraid to give that thing a real thud. But it's still game point for a three-love lead for Sanchez Vicario. Three games into the first set. Barbara Paulus serving down Love 3. This opening set. That's Barbara Paulus's 12th unforced error. You think about it, 12 unforced errors, that's three games worth of unforced errors right there. So there's really very little that Sanchez Vicario has had to do. Here's a look at the women's singles rankings, the top ten. The code number ones, of course, Steffi Graf, Monica Sellis, neither one playing in this event. So Conchita Martinez was the top seed at number two, and Rancho Sanchez Vicario, third in the world. Sanchez Vicario plays much more tennis than anyone else in the top ten. She plays much more than Graf, much more than, than Sellis does. And again, she, she supports the doubles as well. And the third double fault for Paulus. Well, this is pretty ugly, isn't it? You feel, you feel for Barbara Paulus. It's a big occasion for her. She's already played herself a terrific week. Now it's packed stands, and she still can't get her nerves together. Paulus's most potent shot is her backhand cross court, and that's what dragged Sanchez Vicario off the court, giving up a defensive shot that Paulus was able to put away. 30 off. Having already broken Paulus early. Another big cross-court backhand from Paulus that sets up the winning play for her. And even though she's got a squint into the sun, she gets off a pretty good-looking smash. I wonder if she can pick up this game and shrink the deficit to 3-1. It'll make her feel a lot better. I think her play would go up once she gets on the scoreboard. There were some good shots in that sequence, but it was a great first serve that really set up that winning point. That's a pretty good point from Paulus. Not a comfortable position to hit the, that backhand smash from there, and then Sanchez Vicario just kind of shanks this one. That was a great play from her to keep the ball alive. 
But she was in an awkward position for this one. And gets nothing but net. Hollis on the board now. Barbara Paulus said she lost uh, three years from her tennis career battling through those injuries, and uh, at her age, that's a long time in the tennis speak. by year last year she really worked her way back that was her breakthrough she shot up to 23 at the end of the year she's been as high as 12 currently 24 those are the years the she were injured though that that 92 three and four so she did a very fine job of getting herself back into the 20s last year First break opportunity. Six straight points. semi-final match to Conchita Martinez 5-2 in the first set before rallying and trying to stage a similar comeback now try to squash shot forehand there that didn't make it around I think you've got to if Paulus is is set and gets all of her weight behind her shot she's dangerous I think Sanchez Vicar should jerk her around more and pull her up to net as well use the short court more now the first break scored by Barbara Paulus and we're back on serve. Arancha Sanchez, Vicario leading 3-2 in this championship match of the family circle. This was jumpy at the start. She'd only had an hour rest. She had one of the biggest wins in her life. Adrenaline spurting all over the place, but she couldn't control it. But now she appears composed again, and it could be a match. Arancha cannot get too confident. because even though she had taken charge of the point and played this short ball, she knew that Sanchez Vicario was quick enough to get to it. So she was anticipating that Sanchez Vicario would cover this ball, and that's why she was still ready for it at the net. Bud made a good point. Paulus enjoying more confidence by the points. Wide. Yes, just wide. 
honestly, that's what I honestly think that Sanchez Vicario, you've got to rob someone like Paulus of time. They, it takes her a lot of time to prepare for these big, long swings. This shot was struck hard and very deep, and that's why Paulus caught it late off of her hip. You have to make her look awkward like that, and you either do that with speed and depth, or by finding the short court and dragging her around, getting her out of her hitting zone. Vicario has become entirely too reactive. You know, in the first couple of games, she kind of knew to just keep spitting the ball back at Paulus and, and she'd miss. Now she's gotten herself into that into that mode and she's going to have to be more aggressive and start dictating here. Seven big winners already. Still a game point for Paulus. Making her third final appearance this year. But this by far the biggest final of her career. Sanchez Vicaro, she tossed in, hoisted a couple of high ones to get Paulus out of her out of her hitting zone. And then she did use a short court here. And tracked down the volley from Paulus. The second volley, again, she's out of position and defensive at the net. And we're at deuce. lose that comfort zone she had when she, when she lines up and takes that ball right right where she wants it, right in front of her hips, she's in trouble. So Sanchez Vicari has just thrown all kinds of junk at her now. second time in this first set to take a 4-2 lead. Sanchez Vicario with a 4-2 lead here in the first. Arancha making uh, her 10th straight appearance here and just the first appearance here at Hilton Head for Paulus. And this is just the second match Barbara Paul has, has ever played on the stadium court. She beat Natalie Tolzia of France here in the first round. There weren't quite as many people here, I'm sure. until she finally was able to, to take control. Look how, look, look how much road work she does here. She's well behind the baseline there, but got it down nice and low and forced a defensive volley from Paulus and then took control. Some of the quickest feet in tennis. Arancha. <laughs>
That's two very good tennis points in a row. That's pretty high quality stuff. Paul is there going for the forehand fade. Sanchez Vicaria had tried to bunt forehand earlier in the point, but it wasn't good enough. And finds the open water on the next shot. Sanchez Bacara taking a little time. She's done a lot of running these last few points. Normally she gets on with it. She's sucking wind a little bit right now. One of the fittest players on tour. Of course, played the early semifinal today, this morning. A lot of tennis. mentioned uh, Arancha celebrating her 10th anniversary here in Hilton Head 22 and 8 record best previous finish well she's been a finalist but has never won it last year she withdrew with that ankle injury in the third round while playing Amanda Kutzer finished the match gutsy performance and had to withdraw from the quarterfinals and in fact Sanchez Vicari should have obeyed her pain and not try to finish that match against Kutzer. She couldn't play the next day, and then she was out for almost two months. Came in kind of cold to the French Open later in the year, and lost in the final to Graf. So she was very, very disappointed because she was at the peak of her game at that point. And she was number one in the world. Out for two months. Vicario Polish could not deliver, and Arancha takes the 5-2 lead in the first. Important service game for Paulus. Barbara Paulus' service game every time she's been given the ball. She's already been broken twice. And she's faced break point in the other games as well. And that one sprayed long off the end of Paulus's racket. Well, a year ago, you hate to run this kind of highlight, but it was just a gutsy performance by Sanchez Vicario. The right ankle sprain in the third round last year. Finished the match with Kutzer, but forced to withdraw in the quarters. And as we mentioned, a very costly injury out for two months. Rancha really never the same for the rest of 95. Well, she went from being the number one player in the world at this time last year to the number two player in Spain. Because Conchita Martinez won this tournament and then won the next three, including her third straight Italian Open. Oh. Well, it definitely cost Sanchez Vicario. I mean, she lost her traction. And another great point for Arancha. 15-40. Two set points as well. Paulus, the three Grand Slams, 89 and 94 of Roland Garros, 94 U.S. Open that came in the same year as Paris, 94, six-time Grand Slam finalist, three of four in 95 she made the finals. Oh! 
set. Barbara Paulus enjoys such nice rhythm on her strokes, you know, when she's in control. But she's been jerked around an awful lot in the last 20 minutes by Sanchez Vicario, and very effectively. But she's lost her range. And you get anxious as well, playing against Sanchez Vicario. She chases down everything, and it forces you to hit the ball harder, deeper, closer to the line. chance to put it away uh, that shot was pretty tough actually because she found Paulus's backhand side if you lob to someone's forehand and they've got a decent smash it's one of the you know the easiest shots in the world to hit Ball you know how to do it right but, at the net seemed to be a right but if you, easy well if you if you just drift the lob a little bit further over it's their backhand side and that's a very that's one of the hardest shots in tennis 30 love now again for Aracha. Sanchez Vicario's swings are so much more compact than her opponents that it's easier to time the ball. That means she could take it a little bit earlier with less risk. Paulus takes big swings. I'm surprised her timing is that consistently good with all the racket work that goes before the moment of contact. And there's the first game of the second set in easy fashion going to Arancha already up a set. Let's quickly check in with Bud Collins, Bud. Win or lose, Barbara Paulus adds something to the Austrian equation for the U.S.-Austria Federation Cup match the last weekend of this month in Salzburg. It looked like a setup for Billie Jean King's team with only Judith Wiesner standing for Austria, but now Paulus on a clay court could break it up against the Americans, particularly if Monica Sellis doesn't play. I'll break this match update down for us, Mary. Now, the unforced errors are just they're just killing Barbara Paul. She's not taking advantage of the fact that Sanchez Vicari is under 40% first serve percentage. She's making so many errors. And as you can see, apart from her I mean, really low first serve percentage, Sanchez Vicari is playing a very clean and solid clay court match. And again, Paulus anticipates that Sanchez Vicario will cover this ball. That's why she's ready to make the next play. You have to anticipate Arancha getting to everything. I agree with Buck Collins, though. You know, you would think that USA against Austria is a gimme in Fed Cup, which is the women's equivalent of Davis Cup. But look what happened to the Americans over in, Chog, in Prague, Czechoslovakia this weekend. Malabia, Washington, losing that fifth match. So the U.S., which should be a dynasty in Davis Cup, is out in the second round. Nice backhand out of midair by Paulus. And she wins the second game holding serve to tie it up at one apiece. Oh, 
following up the Davis Cup competition that you alluded to, Mary, it's the age-old question. Uh, Andre Agassi not there. Pete Sampras not there. Some of the players there grumbling a little bit that these guys should show up and play for their country, but tournament schedules and the like mess it up a little bit for them. Well, the top ten player, Todd Martin, is the only one of those guys who will consistently avail himself of Davis Cup. And he was there, in fact. In, in, what, in what again was a, a, a losing effort, but frankly, then I, I'm partial. I'm, I'm I, I agree with players like Pete Sampras and Andre Agassi and Jim Courier, who say that the Davis Cup schedule is so screwed up. You know, they haven't the ITF and the Davis Cup people haven't worked out a good enough schedule against the ATP calendar. And what with the Olympics and all, it's an awful lot of tennis to be playing. First of all, we live in a free country. Nobody is required to play for his country. Todd Martin found the time. Here's what I think Michael Chang, Pete Sampras, and Jim Courier should have done, because Andre Agassi declared himself out from the beginning of the year. They should have drawn straws. One of them should have gone to support Todd Martin. Then they would have won and said, next time it's your turn, partner. They were a little inconsistent and inconsiderate. By the way, but it's early, but your Easter bonnet is captured most of the votes for the best one in this 9,000 stadium crowd. Schiaparelli. <laughs> Two great points for the Austrian, Barbara Paulus. And there it is, a break for Paulus. And she takes the 2-1 lead in the second. Boy, she shanked that one, too. She framed that ball, and that's why Sanchez Vicario couldn't get to it. Those big swings. Remember, Bjorn Borg used to do that all the time. He would miss hit the shot because his stroke was so long, his swing so extended, that sometimes he'd wrap his frame around the ball, and it would squirt off the, squirt off the court in a really weird way. Paulus has another streak going here. Thirty love the lead for Paulus, trying to become the first unseeded player to win the Family Circle Magazine Cup. That, of course, does not consider the events in 73 and 74 when the draw did not seed players. This would be a huge feat. Sanchez Vicario has gone back to giving Paulus the kind of ball she likes. Just about hip high, takes it out in front, and once again, Paulus is unrushed. So Sanchez Vicario has to start taking back control of this match to make this a straight setter. She had to give this shot a little bit more air because she was well beyond the baseline and it just caught the net. And Roger allowed that one up right in the wheelhouse of Paulus. And the unseated Austrian charges out to a 3-1 lead in the second. And she's already broken Arancha a couple of times in this match. There's the unforced error she can't afford.
Paula saw it coming. Arancha Sanchez Vicari has good drop shots off both sides, but she gives it away earlier on her forehand side. With her backhand, she can hold the shot, the deception, for a fraction of a moment longer. She said, what am I thinking there, boy? <laughs> Yeah, that's a total shank. <laughs> You're right. When she takes that big wind-up, it better be square. Who knows where the ball's going to go. <laughs> oh. 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 Born in Barcelona, Barcelona, Spain. Raised on clay. Last year, 21 and 2 on the dirt. 13 titles of her 22 on clay. In trouble again is Sanchez Vicario. Another break point for Paul. You can see Sanchez Vicario's game translates well to different surfaces. She's good indoors, she's good on grass, on hard, because her strokes are pretty uncomplicated. She doesn't have clay court grips, which are difficult on low bouncing surfaces. Barbara Paulus's game on grass could be pretty brutal to watch, because, you know, the ball can squirt under her with a bad bounce or, you know, quick conditions. For the third time, Barbara Paulus has broken the service of Arancha Sanchez Vicario, now leading 4-1. Moving up to an hour into this championship match, Paulus and Sanchez Vicario already semifinals today, so the day becoming longer and Paulus becoming more confident, serving up 4-1. early double fault. There have been six breaks in the 13 games so far. And that really kind of holds true to form in women's tennis. Mary, not a lot of uh, women consistently hold serve. very, very well, and it was Sanchez Vicario who couldn't control the last shot in that rally. But you're exactly right then. Many more breaks of serving women's tennis than men. Women's return games tend to be bigger than their service games. And that, honestly, is the single biggest reason I feel that the men's fields are so much richer and deeper. I and mean, there's dozens and dozens of guys who consistently hold serve, and that's why they can challenge even the best players. You can hold serve. That means even against Pete Sampras, you're in a tie break. Not true on the women's side enough. In fact, the number is as few as what? One, two, three women hold tennis or uh, hold Steffi, serve uh, Steffi consistently? Groff, Steffi Groff and Celis Protector serves very well. Conchita Martinez normally has a good time. And Sanchez Vicario is a very, very fine returner of serve, and she tends to hold as well. But I, I mean, if I had a young player, boy or girl, boy, I would spend so much time practicing the serve and the return. a little strange, but Collins, you're down there courtside. The stroke sounding a little strange to you as well? Dan, if you're up close, you can tell that 
Barbara's racket is very loosely strung. It makes a different sound from Sanchez Vicario's racket at this break point. I think it's a reaction to those bad wrists. She's not getting as much vibration. And look at that ball. It's almost like one of the old spaghetti rackets that were so loosely strung that were outlawed. in this match. Sanchez Vicario still trailing 2-4 in the second after winning the first set 6-2. Sanchez Vicario has not by any means given up on this set. court is the easiest court to try to break serve on anyway. That was a nicely played point from Paulus because Sanchez Vicaria had hit a ball that squirted off the sideline. She had to make a, in a fraction of a moment, a reaction to that ball. Got it back well and then won it on her next shot. Look at those wrist braces on Paulus. It looks like a, a bowler would wear a similar <laughs> contraption on, but this on both wrists. in quick danger of being broken yet again. Well, you know, on, on clay, you, you try to, you tend to try to bend the ball in a little bit more. Have a look at the unforced errors. Paulus has come down. Arancha up. The clay will take a lot of the, a lot of the sting out of a ball and it'll be a nice high bounce. And Paulus is 5'9". She can handle a high bounce. Well, this draw used to be here at Family Circle Magazine Cup 56. They cut it in half to 28. There's been some conversation on both sides in favor of that, against it. She does here. This ball, she has all kinds of time to set up for this. Watch how her head drags down. Let that thing come down a little bit too much. It was almost too easy. She was wide open to the net. She, she, I mean, she, she lost all form on that shot. Faults oh. called a bit late. Donna Butler, the chair umpire. Mary, while we have a chance, your thoughts on the 28-player draw here? Uh, I, the whole point of the 28 draws in women's tennis these days, that's, that's a 32 draw with four buys, obviously, to the top four seats. Downsizing, I think, has become a necessity. I think the players, I think the tour hopes that the top players will play smaller draws more and then play each other more. So I'm basically for it. just came out and took a quick look at Paulus's knee, but she was sent back up into the stand, so maybe Paulus apparently all right. 
but she's had surgery on both wrists and has had knee surgery in the past. I don't like the way Arantxa Sanchez Vicario is striking her forehand. She's really flat onto the net. And she's just covering the ball. She's not getting any kind of real length on her shot anymore. She always, almost every time she hits a forehand, it's cross court anyway. And I think it's just become too defensive. Twelve unforced forehands. The surest sign that Sanchez Vicario is lacking confidence is when she doesn't do much off her forehand side. She's going to have to start coming up with better shots from there. Two points away from evening up this championship match. She's trying to find the Sanchez Vicario forehand side and play to it. Three set points. She's done a, that a couple of times, hasn't she? Mm -hmm. She gets anxious. That shot a little bit harder than it looks because she really had to move into it. And to move forward and still strike a ball isn't the easiest thing in the world, but it was very makeable. stops on the women's tour family circle magazine cup great stadium court atmosphere today better than 9,000 getting treated to a three-set championship final Sanchez Vicario looked good early Paulus came back broke Vicario a couple of times in the second set and now trailing love one in the third on serve Look at the match update. 
Sanchez Vicario's first serve percentage has gone up past the halfway mark. That's good news, but look at all the unforced errors, twice as many as the winner she got off. Brushing over the ball, isn't she? She continues to pop that two-handed backhand of hers. I think under pressure, it's usually a little bit better than this forehand. Look, this thing's got nothing on it. It's just begging to be attacked. And you get it in the wheelhouse of Paulus. It's an easy point. <laughs> Much like a baseball pitcher who makes a mistake. Fastball across the letters of Paulus and she takes advantage of it, but now trailing this match goes, the longer Paula stays in it. So Rancha begin to feel the pressure. Heavy favorite in this final. trying to even it up in the third. Sanchez Vicario will continue to be in trouble against Paulus as she continues to give the Austrian the kind of pace she likes. What can happen to a player then when they try to, to screw up the timing and the rhythm of their opponents, as Sanchez Vicaria has tried to do during this match, you know, you lose your own rhythm as well. When you try to junk ball somebody and, you know, off ball them, you're leaving your own game as well. Three unseeded players have advanced to the final. Claudia Cota Kilsch back in 84, Gabriella Sabatini in 85, Jennifer Capriati at the age of 14 back in 1990 against The Ledge, Martina Navratilova in Jennifer's words. None have been able to pull off the win though.
now an hour and 15 minutes into this final again the two both played semifinals this morning Game points for a 2-1 lead in the third. Arancha Sanchez Vicario takes the third game of the third set. She's up 2-1. Sanchez Vicario getting cooled down on the green couch courtside. There's no question that Clay is her best surface, having won twice at the French Open. Her most recent triumph came there back in 1994 over Mary Pierce. And Sanchez Vicario also won the French Open back in 89 when she beat Steffi Graf. the high French Open. And here looking for her First title of 96 in the first tournament of this clay court season. Paula serving down 1-2. Sanchez Vicario's mindset has changed early in set three from set two. Sanchez Vicario had grown too defensive in that second set and only two winners came off of her racket in that middle set. But already in the first three games of set three, she's had herself five winners. Late call, but a correct one. Just long. No doubt about that one. In midair, Paulus's backhand strikes at home for the winner. He's up 30-15. Big old swing volley from Barbara Paulus. Remember watching young Carling Bassett do that. A lot of a lot of two-handed ground strokers started doing it after there she seemed used to, to be step the rage <laughs> back then. Another swing volley, and that one had dropped too low. So by the time she made her swing. She had, she had lost control of the shot. And this is the danger with the swing volley. If you let it drop too much, you really got to scoop under that thing and go low to high. A volley's supposed to go high to low. Junk it up. A lot of breaks in this final. Both players taking advantage of them as well. You don't see eight breaks in a men's final. set. Arancha with a 3-1 lead in the third. And another 
familiar unforced error. Now this is the if if Paulus felt better about her transition game, getting from the backcourt to the to the forecourt, she'd volley so much better. And this is what Sanchez Vicaria does so well. A lot of baseliners would feel better about playing the net if they knew how to get up there better. for Arantxa Sanchez Vicario trying to become just the eighth champion in this prestigious 24-year history of this event. Sanchez Vicaria got off a real big forehand in the middle of this rally, and that pulled Paulus off the court and set up that winning play. Point away from a 4-1 lead. Great Chris Everett won this title a third of the times in which it was played. You believe that eight <laughs> times? A gaudy record to be sure. The greatest clay court player of all time. I believe Steffi won it four times. So did Martina. Conchita twice. Rosie Casals will be inducted into the Hall of Fame later this summer. Won the inaugural back in 73. Gabriella Sabatini won it a couple of times. And Arantxa Sanchez Vicario on pace to win her first Family Circle Magazine Cup up 4-1. Dan Hicks with Mary Carrillo and Bud Collins. Sanchez Vicario, two games away from wrapping this up. Pretty idea, but that's a very difficult thing to do. What Sanchez Vicario tried to do here is, as she's running forward, hoist up a, a gentle lob, but she pushed it long. Paulus's goal for 96 was to get herself into the top 20. And she's already done that after this fine performance this week. Two top 10 wins. She should have a pretty good looking clay court season. Maybe we'll hear more from Paulus in the upcoming. French Open next month. Right now, she's just trying to stay alive against the two-time French Open champion. Now 30 all. Forty-four. Unforced for Paulus.
strike zone of Paulus's is being forced to get bigger and bigger. She's missed a whole bunch of forehands in the last several games. Sanchez Vicara doing a good job of giving her a different look. now for Aracha who will play in her third Olympics in Atlanta she won the silver in Barcelona and doubles with Conchita Martinez back in 92 the gold won by Mary Jo Fernandez and Gigi Fernandez in doubles competition back in Barcelona Another forehand miss. Point away from a 5-2 lead in the third. And there it is, Arancha Sanchez Vicario, a game away from her first championship at Hilton Head. resting on the green couch and <laughs> meanwhile the unseated Paulus wants to save a little more time on the stadium court a good looking win for Arancha Sanchez Vicaria. She thrives on confidence and she really hasn't had that much confidence in the last half year or so. So this has been a big test for her this week and I think it should really help her going into the, the clay court season. Sanchez Vicaria's in the number one ranking was short-lived and it was qualified by many by the absence of Monica Sellis you know? and then as I said after Sellis came back last year and she got herself to the final of the US Open her second tournament back Sanchez Vicario anymore, and she really felt she deserved it. Well, she's focusing a lot of attention on herself now. Match point. 
double championship match point for Aracha. prestigious women's event in three sets. Two six. Six two and six two. Arancha Sanchez Vicario wins her first at Hilton Head. For Mary Carrillo and Bud Collins, I'm Dan Hicks saying so long from South Carolina.